or I can restart the VDC, meaning bring the VDC down and restart the VDC by using the running config that was there in the VDC at the time of the crash. So I'm gonna also specify restart in this case. Something else I can do is I can limit the resources for this VDC. What kind of resources can I limit? I can limit the VRFs that are used within the VDC. I can set a minimum value, let's support 16, and I can set also a maximum volume, volume, which is, I don't know, 20. Another resource I can limit is VLAN. So I can set a minimum of 16 VLAN and a maximum of 32. So when uh, the VDC admin is going to start configuring VLAN, it will be able to configure up to 32 VLANs. Something else is also limit the, for example, the port channel. So let's suppose that I don't want to give uh, any port channel to this particular VDC. So I'm gonna set zero. Oops. Yeah, that this, for example, could be fixed because if the minimum is zero, the maximum, you know, sorry, the maximum is supposed to be zero. <laughs> My mistake. Okay. With this configuration, the VDC uh, that I created won't be able to have a port channel within the uh, within the VDC itself. So at this point, we are pretty much done with the configuration of the VDC. In fact, if we do show VDC uh, pod two detail, you will see that this is the name of the VDC, the state is active, the HA policy for a single soup is restart, and is the same policy even if you have a dual soup. Something else we can see for this particular VDC is the membership. As you remember, I just assign the ports from 30 to 40. And also, what I can do, I can see the resources. This is what I, as, I, I have assigned in, term of, in terms of resource to, the, to this particular VDC. Once we are done with configuring the VDC, we can initialize the VDC. And we do it by switching to that VDC. When we switch to the VDC, we will be prompt with the uh, initial script that we will that will guide us to initialize the, config the configuration on the VDC. The same script, actually a superset of the script, is going to be present when you buy this, uh, the Nexus 7000 and when you turn on the Nexus 7000 for the first time. So we have to specify a password in case of pod 2 for this particular VDC. So pod to an XOS. So would you like to enter the basic configuration? Yes. Create another login account, not for now. SNMP, I don't care for now. The pod name, pod two, sorry, the VDC name, pod two. So do you wanna continue with the out of band management configuration? Yes. So the management interface, 32, 20, uh, 151, 104, 255, 255, 0, the default gateway, yes, 172.20.21.1, .1. configure ad advanced IP option, no, I don't care, enable telnet service, as you can see the telnet is disabled by default, but I will enable, I actually will say no to SSH. Configure NTP server? No. So do you want the uh, interface to come up with by default? I would say layer 3 and also shut down. At this point the configuration is ready and I don't want to do any other change. This is the configuration. As you can see we have the name, we have the interface manage management 0, and also we have the default route for the management VRF plus some other inter uh, configuration here that says that Telnet is enabled, SSH is disabled, and the ports will, will come up as layer three and will be shut down. So I, want, I don't want to modify the configuration. Do you want to save it? Not for now. 
and we are within the uh, new VDC. Okay, so this is how you create a VDC and initialize the VDC. As you can, as you may know, uh, the VDC we support up to four VDCs for the first release, uh, meaning we have uh, one default VDC, which is the the one that you know the system starts in, and then we have three non-default VDC VDCs. So again, VDC is a very powerful feature. It's something that really differentiates us from our competitors. So it's very important to uh, talk about this to our customer, to our customers, and make sure they understand the the validity of the feature. We will come up with case studies uh, within DBU, so you will be also able to illustrate how to use this feature in uh, um, real uh, scenarios. Okay. Okay, so this concludes step number 11, virtual device content. It also concludes the NSOS lab. I hope you guys have found this helpful. 